afternoon. I see the senator and all council are assembled. I understand our jury's back. Yes. Anything before we bring the jury in and turn to the defense call to next week? Uh, yes, Your Honor, there is. Um, Uh, defense counsel has just advised me uh, that the next witness intends to, they intend to use a, what's the name? Uh, then there's nothing, uh, I have nothing. I've just been advised they're not going to use what I have, the exhibit that I was going to bring to your attention. So, we're ready. We would call this a non-issue? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Are there any issues? No, Hearing none, bring the jury.
Defense calls their witness. Defense calls Dr. Wayne Meyer. Please wear a firm and testimony in the hearing of the truth, the whole truth, and the truth of the God. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Introduce yourself to the jury. Wade Cooper Myers, MD. Can you talk to the jury about your education background? I went to college at Stetson University where I got a degree in biology. I then went to medical school at Temple University in Philadelphia where I got my MD degree. Uh, following that, I did a one year internship in general surgery here at University of South Florida at Tampa General primarily. After that I did a psychiatry residency at University of Florida in Gainesville where I did my basic training in psychiatry and following that I did two fellowships in psychiatry as well. I did a child and adolescent psychiatry fellowship at University of Florida and also there I did a one year forensic psychiatry fellowship. Okay. You could speak up a little bit. Um, tell me about your work background. Uh, following my training, is that better? Yes. Uh, following my training, I joined the faculty at University of Florida in psychiatry, the Department of Psychiatry there. And I stayed there uh, as a faculty member where I was an assistant professor and then I was promoted to an associate professor for about 15 years. Uh, from there, I came down to University of South Florida in Tampa where I was uh, uh, chief of the division of forensic psychiatry uh, for approximately four or so years. And then for the past five years, almost, I've been a professor of psychiatry at Brown University in Providence, Rhode Island. And I'm also director of a forensic psychiatry training program there, which I, I helped start and now run. How long have you been doing teaching? Since I joined the uh, first uh, faculty, which would have been in 1989. So ever, ever since then, I've been affiliated and, and with um, uh, medical schools. Do you currently treat patients as well as your other responsibilities? Uh, yes, I do. How long have you had patients that you treat? Has that ever discontinued? No, no, it is not. Ever since I was a medical student, I've been involved in, in patient care. How long have you been involved with forensic psychiatry? I started my fellowship in forensic psychiatry in 1989. I did have some involvement with forensic psychiatry in the world of child and adolescent psychiatry in my child psychiatry training. Uh, for a while, I was assigned at a juvenile jail where I did some forensic work there with, with children as far as assessments of kids who have been charged with serious crimes, for instance, and, and treating them. Have you also been in evaluating ad adults? Uh, yes, I have throughout my career as well. Okay. Do you have any, um, have you testified before in court as an expert in the field of forensic psychiatry? I have on a fairly regular basis throughout my career. How many courts or what jurisdictions have you testified in before? I've testified in a lot of jurisdictions throughout Florida. I've testified in uh, a number of different states. I've testified more recently in Rhode Island, um, Massachusetts. Um, I could I could name other states, but that's. That, that's times? an example of, of various, some of the states I've testified in. Do you have any idea of how many times you've done that? 400 and something times in my career. And when you've testified before in that capacity, has that been both for the state and for the defense? Yes, it has. 
have you, as part of your uh, career, have you had any publications? I have. I've been involved in research throughout my career, and I have uh, slightly more than 100 publications at this point, and I'm working on some research at this time, which I pretty much have always been involved in. Do you hold any, um, do you have to have a license in order to be a forensic psychiatrist or a psychiatrist? Uh, yes, you have to have your medical license, then you have to have your board certification in psychiatry, and then I also have my board certification in forensic psychiatry, which means I, I did a one-year fellowship successfully and then I passed a board examination. Is that something that you have to renew periodically? Every 10 years. Do you have ongoing um, education as well? Uh, yes, you do. When um, the publications that you have done, have you ever done um, publications in the field of filicide? Uh, I have, yes. Can you explain to the jury what filicide is? Filicide is uh, the murder of a child by a parent, simply defined. And the, um, the publication that you have for that, can you explain that to the jury, the research that was done for that? I collaborated with two uh, other uh, researchers. One's a, uh, at Brown University with me, and then there's another one, at a criminologist in Hong Kong. And we looked at a United States database on homicides called the Supplemental Homicide Reports. And we looked at 32 years of filicide data in the United States for the last 32 years, and, and we found that there was 95,000 filicides over that 32-year period. So there's about 3,000 filicides a year. And what we did was we analyzed it in different ways by age, um, uh, victim-offender relationship, uh, weapon used, uh, that sort of thing. Um, at this point, I would uh, open Dr. Myers for potential one year on this issue. Uh, no questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Myers, did you um, at some point become involved in this case involving Ms. Schenecker? I, I did, yes. Do you remember when that was that you became involved in the case? What the date was? The specific date, no, would have been in 2011. I, I was asked at that point if I'd be willing to review the materials and, con and do a psychiatric evaluation of Ms. Schenecker. Now, what materials, and I'm, I'm not asking you piece by piece, but in general, what kind of materials were you given to review in this case? Well, the arrest and investigative materials, uh, the uh, crime scene reports, crime scene photos, statements, and depositions of uh, the officers involved, um, Ms. Schenecker's uh, medical records, her uh, her military records, her psychiatric records, uh, jail records, uh, depositions of, uh, of family members of, of other uh, evaluators. Over the course of um, your process in this case of having an evaluation, did you meet <coughs> with Ms. Schenecker? I did, yes. So I met with her on four different occasions for a total of about ten and a half hours. So I first saw her in 2011 and I last saw her in May of 2013. When you obtained that information and you were able to meet with Ms. Schenecker, did you have an opportunity to review all of her records? Uh, yes, but there has been some material that has come in waves uh, since I, I first saw her. Okay. So you were involved in the case, were provided some information. As information came in, you also considered everything that was coming to you. Correct. Okay. When, you, um, when you did a review of Ms. Schenecker's um, records, were you able to see her care as well as the medication that she was on? 
Uh, yes, there's a very well documented uh, history of both mental health treatment and treatment for her physical conditions. What was the time frame of the records that were provided to you regarding her m mental health treatment? Going back to approximately uh, 2000, with with references to past treatments in the, in those records. Was there a diagnosis that you were able to obtain from the records that was reflected in the records for Ms. Schenecker's treatment? Regarding mental illness? Yes. Yes. I mean, the, the diagnoses she's had have, the further back you go, the more it's referred to as depression. And then as we get towards 2000, uh, a little over, uh, 10, 15, or around 10 or 15 years ago, it begins shifting to bipolar disorder. And then as we get in the, the say, 2002 to 2010 range, it's typically bipolar disorder, sometimes with psychotic features, and also sometimes schizoaffective affective disorder is, is mentioned as well. Can you explain to the jury what bipolar disorder is with psychotic features? It, bipolar disorder with psychotic features is, is a severe form of bipolar disorder. An old term for it was manic depressive illness, and it's a, a mental illness, it's a, it's a brain disease that's manifested by a person having abnormally elevated or abnormally uh, depressed moods, but far outside the range of what a normal person would experience as far as being happy or being sad about things, to the point where it, it's incapacitating. Does everyone that has bipolar disorder also have psychotic features? No. Some people with bipolar disorder do not have psychotic features. What does that mean to have psychotic features? Well, it means a couple things. One, it, it, it means you're having uh, typically delusional thinking, which is our false fixed beliefs not based on reality, or uh, it might also mean that you're having hallucinations. Generally, it would be either auditory hallucinations where you're hearing things that other people can't hear or you're seeing things that other people can't see. It also indicates that it's a more severe form of bipolar disorder. What is the difference between bipolar disorder with psychotic features and schizoaffective disorder? The schizoaffective disorder is, is different in the sense that People with schizoaffective illness will have periods where they don't seem to be having mood problems, but they will be having psychotic symptoms at the time, be it delusions, hallucinations, or uh, confused or jumbled thinking. Whereas bipolar disorder with psychotic features, the, the psychotic symptoms go hand in hand with the mood symptoms. And the worse the mood symptoms get, the more likely they are to develop the, the psychotic symptoms. What were you able to discern from the records? And I'm, you talked about it a little bit that the diagnosis starts off with depression and then goes towards bipolar one and a little bit sometimes reference to schizoaffective disorder. What did you discern from the records as far as how Ms. Schenecker's mental health status was progressing over the years? In general, her course has been deteriorating uh, as the years have, have gone by. Uh, it's, uh, it, the worst it's ever been, of course, was the event that we're all sitting here uh, talking about uh, today. Uh, and the, the family members as well uh, that I interviewed, just like you see in the medical records, describe things getting slowly but progressively worse and worse and worse as the years progressed.
Let me know when you're ready. I'm going to have you uh, both speak to him since he's on the stand if you need to speak to him. Okay. 